It's a long story. You ready for it? Yes, sir. Dun, 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 dun. So people always know me as the church kid. Did it ever become an issue for you being the church kid? Got picked on. Got lied on. I was hurt. Now, mind you, I'm already being picked on the kids because I wasn't raised by my father. I was raised by women, as I told you earlier, right? Yes, sir. So in the mindset of the world, people, they were saying, he's gay. Did you ever get to a place where you were tempted to go there? Or that was never a thing? At that time, it wasn't a thing. Y'all saying I'm doing it, so I might as well. Yep. Church people, not kingdom people, but church people, stay hard on that particular thing. I know I probably would have bust hell open because I just lost love for them. This is my story. <laughs> At the age of 21, I met my father. I was so nervous. But what do I look like going into a barbershop with straight men, full of straight men, <laughs> and asking this dude, like, are you my father? Do you think it is possible that your homosexual curiosity was connected to wanting to have love from a man? God, this is a raw Lord. I pray, did that answer that question? Absolutely. Okay. What up, y'all? I'm Rajay, and this is another episode of the RXS Podcast, and we got Devontae Jones, a.k.a. D-Boy 12 in the building. What's good, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? How, <laughs> How you, you doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How you? I'm good. Yeah, man. What you been up to? Hey, man. Enjoying life and just living and working and building. Yeah. What you been working on? So um, right now I'm in the process of doing, you know, my social media platforms such as TikTok land, yeah. Facebook land, Instagramming, and we're building that platform as well as just um just vibing, having a good time. Yeah. So how did you even get to being on social media like that? Oh, look at you. You take me <laughs> back to 2020 when the pandemic first happened. Okay. So it's a long story. You ready for it? Yes, sir. Okay. So I was working at Chick-fil-A, right? In yeah. Greenville, North Carolina. Shout out to Eastern North Carolina. Yeah. The Chick-fil-A that fired me, but we're going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working at Chick-fil-A, and I had like two hours left before clocking in to work. And so I was like, oh, let me go try a Wendy's breakfast sandwich because it was come on the TV and commercialized. And who would have ever thought Wendy's had breakfast, right? Right. So remind you, I had two hours before clocking in to work, and I was like, I'm just going to go through the drive through and get a honey butter biscuit. Yeah. And um, I went to that drive through um, with my Chick fil A uniform on, and I just decided to record. Didn't know the video was going to go viral, right? It went crazy viral. Like, so when, when you recorded it, what did you say? Hanande Yan Winnie, if you never make another chicken biscuit, baby girl, you did your big one on this one. And I was just shouting, and my seat was going. <laughs> and I was about to choke on the biscuit because it was so good. And it had like that dry good, though. You know what I'm saying? It was dry, honey wet good. Yeah. Dry and wet at the same time. You know yeah. So it went like crazy viral. And um, yeah. I ended up losing my job at Chick-fil-A behind it video. Dun, 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 dun. What, what was their reasoning? Well, because I had on a Chick-fil-A <laughs> uniform, <laughs> you know. But... Um, the young lady who did fire me, um, she kind of lied about another reason why she fired me, but to find out that was the reason why I got fired because of me promoting the Wendy sandwich. I didn't know the video was going to viral. Hey, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. But I will say it was all a part of God's plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And what was the next step from there? So the next step from there, and I remind you, I just lost my job, bills due, um, the cares of life happening. I had church that same night of losing my job, didn't know what I was going to do, but I was faithful to God and faithful to my assignment as the praise and worship leader at my church. Um, I traveled to Windsor, North Carolina. Shout out to my church, Greater Baysmore Temple Church. Shout of out. Christ. Yeah. Where my pastor's Pastor Maurice Devonport Jr. Yeah. I went to church that night. Um, I was consistent. You know, even though I was going through and dealing with that, um, David said, I will bless the Lord at all. My God today. Yes, sir. And his praise shall continually be in yeah. my mouth. I went to that church after knowing that I lost my job and I got fired. Baby, I gave God the best praise ever. Woo. You hear me? When I tell you I went off, <laughs> I was sweating, sweating bullets. <laughs> yeah. But I gave God my best praise. Um, And leaving that service that night, I got over to Williamston Bridge, and I heard the Lord say, go home, write the vision, and make it plain. And it was a long revival that night. You know, we had a long window speaker. <laughs> so it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. We on the way home, and I'm yeah. saying, like, God, I really want to go to sleep, get some rest. 
But I got out of the journal. I never forget this. This is a true story. I got out of the journal, and all I heard the Lord was saying, and it is so, and so shall it be. Wow. I'm trying not to cry. He said, and it is so, and so shall it be. And I saw colors come to mind. It was black and white, white and black, and yellow and red. And so I saw the T-shirt plain as day, but I was like, God, I don't know how to make no T-shirts. You know what I'm saying? So I connected with another individual who's been with me since day one. Her name is Janetta Whitaker, and I love her so much. Yeah. If you need a T-shirt made, all that kind of good stuff, she is the lady um, to go to. Um, I call her with the vision that the Lord has gave me. And um, she said, okay, let's do it. Now, mind you, in my bank account, all I had was $200. She gave me a price to make 16 shirts, and um, it left $40 in my account. But I stepped out on faith, and uh, it was the best thing I ever done. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And I ain't going to tell you how much I got in my account now, but I tell you what, I don't look like what I've been through. Shabbat. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a sustainer. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, man. Yes, so sir. I want to um, I want to do what we normally do. Mm-hmm. And I want you to take me all the way back to the beginning. Where were you born? Oh, let's do it. Shout out to my hometown, Bethel, North Carolina. Yeah. B-E-T-H-E-L. Do you know what Bethel mean? Um, In the Bible. Come on now. I think now, I you've been do, in church tell, all your I life. Tell me, though. I think I know, but tell me anyway. It mean the house of God. Yeah, I I, I didn't want to be wrong because I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford to be wrong. Okay. It mean the house of God. So I'm from Bethel, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's where I was born and raised. Yeah. What was it like growing up there? So that's a good question. Thank you for answering there. Um, asking me there. Um, Bethel is a small town. Um, one caution light you out. Um, <laughs> it's very small, but it's a small town. that's full of love. Um, so people always know me as the church kid. In the neighborhood, I always been known as the church boy. Um, so being there in that neighborhood, um, shout out to my mom, Vicky Jones. Yeah. Um, shout out to Miss Mary. She's my mom. She the one that raised me and my mother. Actually. Okay. Wow. Um, so I was there with her. Um, in the home, you know, with all women's. Um, mm. you know, so it was it was a journey. Yeah. It was, a journey. It was definitely. A so journey. did you um do you did you go through like all of your school years there too? Absolutely, absolutely. Bethel Elementary School, Bethel Middle School, and shout out to North Pitt High School. Yo. Wow, Panther. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever, um, did it ever become an issue for you being the church kid? What? Talk about it. What? Got picked on. Mm. What? Got lied on. Um, one incident that I couldn't talk about, but I'm able to talk about now. Mm-hmm. Um, being a church kid, growing up in church, serving as the praise and worship leader, um, and so on and so on. You know, just acted in the church. An incident happened at um, a church I was at, and um, the lady went back and told the pastor, and I hope this podcast is very raw and keep it real. Yes, sir. She went back and told the pastor I was the biggest homosexuality ever in Greenville, North Carolina. And what? this was at a young age. A young age, I was probably about twelve years old then. So the pastor, you know, um, he took me in his own hand. You know, sat me down. I wasn't able to sing as the praise and worship leader. wasn't able to do anything. Wait, wait, wait. So he just believed it. He believed it. Wouldn't talk to me. Didn't want to have conversation with me. Left me in the red. Um, when I used to get up to try to shout in the church, he'll tell the deacons to take me out of the church. Oh, I got a story now. He told really? Me, yeah, absolutely. I told the deacons to take me out of the church. Um, so it, it left me kind of, it, not kind of, it left me wounded. Mm-hmm. I was hurt, you know, and at the time, catch this, I wasn't even dealing with that struggle at the time. Yeah. Right? But um, it happened, and the incident happened, it left me hurt and broken. Now, mind you, I'm already being picked on the kids because I wasn't raised by my father. I was raised by women, as I told you earlier, right? Yes, sir. So in the mindset of the world, people, they were saying, he's gay. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I was um, going and battling through that or whatnot. And, um, yeah, it damaged me. But God brought me through. Yes, sir. He brought me through. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what was going on in your mind after that? Like, did you still keep going to church? Did you find another church? Yes, um, at that time I did, um, but it was just for like, I just needed somewhere to just kind of like to clear my mental state because at this point, now mind you, I don't really have trust in church people at the, at that moment of my life. 
that point, you know, I'm good now. But at that moment, I didn't really trust. Like, I was hurt. I was burdened. This is the church that I've been born in, raised in, you know. And now it's just like everything backfired on you. Mm-hmm. So I did go visit another church. Um, Like I said, it was for a season of my life. Um, I just needed to be covered and be loved and just find myself back in God again, yeah. you know. And um, I visited that church um, that I did go to. Um, but then God led me to the church I'm at now, and it has been such a blessing. Wow. It's been such a blessing. It's been such a blessing. So to go back to what you were saying mm-hmm. about homosexuality, did you ever get to a place where you were tempted to go there, or that was never a thing? At that time, it wasn't a thing. And now, <laughs> now fast forward and tell me what happened. <laughs> If you don't catch that one, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. At that time, for real, on the real note, at that time it wasn't. But I began <clears> to <throat> then listen to people's opinion and um, you know, I did my thing. So was it a was it a me. situation where y'all saying I'm doing it, so I might as well? Yep. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yes. Yes. Since y'all wanted to be true so bad. Yes. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. In that in that time in your life, how was it for you? Like, because I'm sure it's, how old were you? 12. So it's young. very, you're young and it's mm-hmm. very experimental. Mm-hmm. Like, what are what's going on in your mind and what's going on with your emotions through this? Now, at this time, I'm really battling, right? Because um, church people and, you know, seeing this, seeing it in the day, but, you know, church people just stay hard. Not kingdom people, but church people stay hard on that particular thing. They you do. know what I'm saying? Like, they, oh my, like, what? If you tell the world that I'm yeah. gay or I'm a lesbian, whatever the case may be, baby, just get ready to go in the jail cell and never come back. So at that time of my life, it was just like a battling decisions in between, you know, like, because I'm. I'm, I'm doing this to really please the church people. Or I'm doing this to please God. Like, I don't know mm. where I'm at. Okay, they already hurt me at this moment. So maybe I need to do it. But, you know, um, it, it was just so, so much going yeah. on. My mind was just cluttered. And as I said, at that time, I just needed to go to somebody else church to say, I need you. Wow. And like, how, can you hear me out? How you know? did that church respond? At that time. Um, I want to shout out the church so bad, but I don't want to be messy. Yes, sir. But um, they nurtured me. They took me in, you know. Um, They treated me with love. They treated me with kindness. And as I began to grow more and more in God, I, now I know who I am in God. Yeah, man. So it don't matter what I struggle with. It don't matter what I deal with. Like, God still loves me for me. And he still have a calling on my life. And he still have anointed me for such a time as this. So I thank God for that moment though I do it because I, I believe, me personally, that's something I had to go through in yes. order to get to my nail. Yeah, man. So I'm glad that it did. And I'm and I'm happy to hear that um going through that and dealing with those things did not put you in a place where you wanted to disconnect from God. Mm, mm. Because because of the way the church feels about homosexuality, they will almost f- make you feel like you can't even love God. I'm telling you. If you're a homosexual. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. As if you can lie and love them. Come on now. You can mistreat people and love Come them. Come on now. You can be a con artist and love them. Preach this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I, I, I ain't going to lie. I've always been like, yo, I don't understand. I've never understood. Yeah. I've never understood. Because it's yeah. like, like you, I grew up in church. Mm-hmm. So, I know the behind the scenes of church. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if we're going to call a spade a spade, mm-hmm. like, some of you heterosexual people is, like, out of pocket. Come on, man. Heavily out of pocket. So, if we were to, like, air out everybody's laundry, That's nobody it. could cast a stone. That's it. That's it. And if that were the case, the whole church would be closed down. You get what I'm saying? But as I grow, like I said, I had to just grow to a place of maturity and let that go. Remind you, at the beginning, I wasn't able to talk about it. I was hurt. I didn't like the pastor. I didn't like that individual that went and told the pastor that mess. I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't able to stand. Like, I know I probably would have bust hell open because I just lost love for them. Right? 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. It wouldn't have been so much of what I was struggling with, but because, like, you don't even love your own brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But today I can stay here and say with freedom, with true freedom, like, I forgave them and I loved them, and now I understand why. Fantasia got a song that said it was necessary. Yes, Lord. You hear what I'm telling you? And yes, that sir. what I had to go through was definitely necessary, and I believe it was a part of God's plan. Yeah. So the church that you're at now, mm-hmm. When did you start going to that church? Like, how old were you? Um, I was in the ninth grade. Okay. Um, began the stage of going to the ninth grade because I went ninth grade. Um, um, I graduated twenty fifteen. I'm sorry. So, um, when was the time of fifteen? Mm. I can do. Right. I can do math, y'all. Don't <laughs> don't try to play me now. Twenty twelve. Okay. Twenty twelve. <laughs> Yeah, for you. Okay, that's right. 2012, y'all okay, start going yeah. to um, my church at yeah. Greater Bay's going Temple. And were you already like singing and stuff then too? Yes. I remember. When did you start singing? <laughs> well, at the church that hurt me. Uh, that's when you discovered you could sing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you know what's crazy? What's that? I don't think nobody in my family can really sing. Wow. But me, ain't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Oh. Yeah. Um, with that being said, God had his hand on my life then. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? For real, yes. for real. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Yes. And another thing I want to talk about, man, to that point of your life, it's like, I used to believe, church made me believe that struggles can stop the plan of God. Like, I used to be like, okay, if I do this, then I'll never reach my destiny. And it's like, no, that's not how that works. Mm. And like, so to hear your testimony and to know your story, it's like God's promises still are yes and amen. Yes, sir. No matter what you go through, yes, no matter what you struggle with, what he has for you is for you. Yes, yes. And this is what I understand about that as well. Salvation is an inside job. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of that, when we all can come to the conclusion that we are all sinners saved by grace. We all sin to save by grace, and we all striving to see one God. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, man. Um, that's what I'm in my life. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now let's go back or forward. Mm-hmm. So you're in this church, the last church you're in. You're singing. Um, it wasn't too long ago, which is crazy. So how old were you when you started working at that Chick-fil-A? Ooh, that was 2020. So I believe you now. Um 2019. Okay. I started at Chick fil A. Yeah, literally just a one year time in. Yeah, and I was gone. <laughs> Where were so you working sad. before? <laughs> Where were you so working sad. before that? Um, Before that, was I at Hardy's? You know, I did a Hardy's job. I did Starbucks job. Um, Shout out to another grill that paid me under the table. It was my very first job. I ain't gonna need, I ain't gonna even put your business out there like that. They were paying you cash. <laughs> they were paying me cash. <laughs> And that was some good cash. Hallelujah. Didn't take out no taxes. <laughs> Glory to God. It was a hood restaurant, though. But God bought me out. Um, yes, yeah, so I did that job. Um, yeah, that was a couple of jobs that I did. So you so you're not you're not a stranger to the grind, it sounds like. Oh no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And where does that come from? The grinding part? I believe that came from Actually, on the real note, my father. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about him. Yeah. So that's another amazing story how that happened. At the age of 21, I met my father. Yeah. Okay. And catch this. I was working at a nursing facility. um, And that nursing facility I was working at, at the time, got closed down due to a resident killing another resident. (laughs) What? That's not even funny. If you can't hold your mule, <laughs> don't give it to somebody that don't deserve it now. Nah. Please don't. You don't know he out here sleeping with everybody. Don't do it. And you gonna do it because it feel good. Why? Because he got a big thing thing or something. <laughs> that ain't, that ain't. You know how many men folk around here? Never mind. I'm just. There's plenty of fishies in the sea. If you enjoyed this clip of Be For Real, 
You can watch the full video. Just head over to RXS Entertainment YouTube channel. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Just type in B-E-F-U-H-R-E-A-L period. <laughs> this is my story. <laughs> Um, yeah, so another resident killed another resident. So they transferred me down to um, another county, okay. which was Martin County. Okay. And there, a lady was at the job. She kept saying, yo, shout out to my Aunt Lois Blunt. She said, you look just like my nephew. What? Yeah, she was like, you look just like my nephew. And I'm saying, girl, no, I don't. Get out of my face. <laughs> right? And um, at the time, like I said, I didn't know my father. Um, that's a whole nother story. But she was like, you look like my nephew. You look like my nephew. You need to go meet him. You need to go talk with him. Like, go sit down, deal with him, whatever. And um, I was so nervous because at this time, right, I'm still in the phase of trying to find myself. I done being hurt by the church. Why would, and my dad is a barber. Yeah. What do I look like going into a barbershop with straight men, full of straight men, <laughs> and asking this dude, like, are you my father? Yeah. Like, I'm not even about to embarrass myself like that. But he reached out to me. He reached out to me. Um, I guess my aunt at that time went and told him the same story that she told me. And uh, he reached out to me. After reaching out to me and all that kind of good stuff, Um, he said, come over to the barbershop to see me. Now, catch this. I'm telling you, everything is in God's plan. The job I was working at is literally across the street from the barbershop. What? Crazy, right? Yes. Crazy. So I got over my fear at that moment, and um, I went over there to the barbershop to um, see my dad. And um, at that very moment, he gave me the greatest hug, and it changed my I mean, it was so sincere. And he gave me, like, this ring, you know, because I never had this man figure in my life. Remember, I've been raised by women all my life. Gave me a hug. And, you know, if I show you a picture of my daddy, you'd be like, yo, that's him. That's him. And um, we have had a bun ever since. And now my dad is my business manager, one of my business managers. Whoa, let's go. Yeah. yeah. So before you met him, what did you think about him? Like, was it like a out of sight, out of mind type of thing? Was it a struggle? Yeah. Um, it was. I won't even try to low-key. You know, I tried a game, even at the age of 12, looking for my father. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy that was, I was, you know, at the time thought was my father. Um, he wasn't my father. And um, guess what? It hurt me. He told me, like, yo, I'm not your daddy. Get out of my life. At the age of 12. I ain't lying. I believe you. I ain't lying to I you I believe now. you. I promise I believe you. I never got I was in the living room couch, and it broke my heart so bad. You know what I'm saying? It hurt. It damaged me so bad. But um, after reaching out to him, I was just like, at that moment, like, I ain't worried about to forget it, y'all. It is what it is. Um, So I was going through all of that, and it was, like I said, all in God's hand and God's timing. When he brought me over there to the Martin County area, he did it. He did it. I prayed one prayer. I was like, God, you know what? I ain't going to even try to keep doing it or keep searching or whatever. But I'm going to let your will be done. Yeah. And it's your time. And when it happened, it happened. If it don't, oh, well. Yeah. You know, I kind of low-key gave up. Mm -hmm. But it was still like a little reassurance. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a deep question, okay? Okay. Because I'm listening to your story. Okay. How deep this question going to be? It's going to be deep. Okay. It's going to be deep. Okay. But I think it'll help somebody if you don't mind answering it. If it's uncomfortable, tell me and we'll move on. If it's not, we're going to stick to here. Do you think it is possible that your homosexual curiosity was connected to wanting to have love from a man? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I'm not ashamed to answer that question. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Like I said, that moment when I realized and found my daddy, Yo, Bro. it was the best because I never had like a, um, and God, this is a raw Lord. I never had that man to say, look, I just want to love you and yes, hug sir. you for you. You know what I'm saying? Not to get what I can get out of you, if that makes sense, if you can read between the lines. 
Um, but I just want to hug you for you and let you know that I'm here for you. Yes. Sir. So yeah, that definitely made an impact and difference. Wow. Absolutely, to answer the question. I pray did that answer that question. Absolutely. Okay. And I wanted to ask you that because um, I'm familiar with that idea, not just with homosexuality, mm -hmm. but in general, most times our lifestyle, whether it be our career or our sexuality mm -hmm. or our gifts or the friends we choose, they're all in pursuit of something that we lacked as a mm. child. Yes, sir. So we're on this journey to like, I want to fill that void. I need to replace that. I want to feel what I never felt. So some people end up working all the time because mm -hmm. they're running from poverty or they end up like, whatever. Y'all get the point. We try to find things and ways to fill those voids. So I appreciate you being honest, man. Absolutely. Because I think that'll help somebody. And here's another thing. Um, I used to didn't want to be honest because I was like, Lord, I don't want to miss a gig. Or if I'm too honest, I might not be invited to somebody else's church. Right? But I believe that we're definitely living in the last and evil days. And if my story can help somebody else, I don't care what the struggle with. I don't care what man opinion may be. I'm willing to tell it and I'm willing to help. That's just me. Bro. And like I said, I'm in the season now. I'm definitely not church minded, but kingdom minded. Yes. There's a difference. There's a big difference. There's a difference. When did you learn that difference? Absolutely. When the trials and cares of life began to come on me and when people that knew my struggle and knew what I dealt with but still treated me like an outcast instead of your job was to pray for me. The Bible said with love and kindness have I drawn thee and love covered a multitude of sin. Come on now, I ain't no preacher, but I know that word. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So when I had begun to see church people and pastors that looked down on me because of what I struggled with, it made me understand that there is a difference between church people and kingdom people. Catch this, because kingdom people, they're going to love you. And if they feel the need to rebuke you, they're going to rebuke you in love. Yes, sir. Church people, they're going to rebuke you and throw you in the ocean and drown. Yeah, man. There's a difference. Yes. There's a difference. That's, a That's difference. so true, man. So now that you've gotten to the place where you met your dad, mm -hmm. the social media stuff was already popping? Um... Yeah, at that time, yeah, 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 yeah. But it just, it, it seemed like the doors just began to more open, you know. Yeah. It was just like everything was happening, you know, embracing moments, yeah. So I won't like all the way like social social media famous, I'll say that or whatnot, but um, I was building there. Okay, so let's talk about that. So for, for the entrepreneurs out there or the creatives out there who are trying to build a brand, mm -hmm. let's go into brand mode. Awesome. Okay, so you do the Wendy's video. Not expecting it to go viral. All right. Then it goes viral. Mm -hmm. Do you then say to yourself, after losing your job, I need to turn this into something? I ain't had no choice. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no job. I ain't working. <laughs> what am I going to get an income from? You know so you saying? are so did you know you already knew it was possible to make money from it? Yes. And somebody prophesied this um over my life as well. And I got to shout him out. Um his name, we don't talk like that now, whatever, but his name is Demarius Harder. He prophesied over me and said, this is going to take off for you. And he said, in the next three to five years, you will be making money behind the computer screen. Kid you not. I got to shout him out. His name is Apostle Demarius Hardy. Um, and I've been taking off ever since then. Yeah. So what was your strategy and plan after the Wendy's video? So after that moment, right, um, I said, you know what? I'm just going to just be the food critic. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, people going to Wendy's, like Wendy's was selling out of breakfast. Oh, the drive through line was full. People were sending me clips of the drive through lines and look what I'm trying to do or whatever. So I said, okay, I'm just going to manifest and become a food critic. So I began to go to different restaurants after that video. And um, another video went viral. Shout out to Little Rockets. Yeah. Um, that chicken salad video, they went viral. Um, what else went viral? It was just a whole lot of bunch of videos going viral. And um, people would call me to actually because we're in the pandemic then, right? Mm -hmm. God used a small country boy from Bethlehem yeah. to put people restaurant on the map. So people would call me and be like, um, hey, I want to pay you. Just come in to review my restaurant. 
So God will send the increase. Your gift will make room for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your gift will make room for you. And go back. Being consistent and praising God even while going through, it will open doors for you. Yeah, man. I could have went in a pity party. No, and I just lost my job, and I still went to church and praise God. Yeah, man. Didn't know where the finance were coming for. But your praise, you know, I don't know if it's in the Bible, but we have the saying when praises go up. Yeah. Blessing come down. That was literally my story. And um, I just began to just go to people's restaurants, mm-hmm. review foods, and um, it just kept building, 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 branding, branding, branding. So yeah. it took off, and um, I created a T-shirt line mm-hmm. uh, with the end of this. So saying, mm-hmm. remember the Lord gave me that saying. And um, people was buying shirt. People I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So by this time, I'm in my mind saying, okay, these videos still going viral. Let me go ahead and put out a shirt. <laughs> and I kid you not, um, we have sold shirt. I promise you, if not every 50 state, um, about just about every state, wow. we have sold shirt. And I have sold over 500 shirts. Wow. I think it is so. And so shall it be. And people still supporting the buying. So. Yeah. So has anybody ever shared personal stories with you of how like your content like helped them in any way? And I hear it all the mm-hmm. time. All the time I hear it. And um, I've, I have come to a conclusion to realize it's ministry. Laughing and making people laugh is ministry because so many people hurt and so many people go through. And, um, People were inbox me like, yo, I was dealing with depression, but I saw your video and it uplifted my spirit. Or um, I'm in a hospital bed dealing with cancer. True story. A lady told me she's dealing with cancer. And, you know, cancer take like the strength out of your body and things like that. And she told me like watching my food reviews and things like that. It lifted her spirit up, you know. So it's ministry. So I have had people to reach out to me and tell me how the content blessed their lives. Yes. So I want to talk about that for a minute because... Mm -hmm. um, I'm 32. How old are you? 27. I just had a birthday. Okay. So I'm 32. You're 27. We watched people. If you wanted to do ministry for the generations before us, Mm -hmm. you were either a singer or a preacher. Right. We live in a day now where you can touch the world and do ministry without being a singer or a preacher. Mm -hmm. Like I had no idea that this podcast would be what it is. But I know people used to tell me, like, you're going to speak to people. And I'm like, like, huh? because in my mind, when I hear speaker, mm-hmm. I'm from church. Mm-hmm. So all the thing I know is pastor preaching. or minister. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not, no, 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 I'm not about to be preaching. So to hear your story, it's another avenue mm-hmm. where you can glorify God and where your gift can make room for you and where you can create revenue for yourself absolutely. and impact the world without having to do the traditional thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's possible. I want to ask you another question. Mm-hmm. Did you have, in this process of your growth, did you have people come back to you that were like silly before? Like whether they may have cut you off or did, oh, less yeah. talk. Oh, yeah. Because you, cause you famous now. Well, to, to God be the glory. I'm still climbing up that ladder. But, um, yeah, absolutely. You have people that, um, that talked about you and even that doubted what God was doing in your life. They'll come at, you know, try to do this congratulation thing or let me hold a little something or, you know, just try to be in your circle. Yeah. Be in your circle. What is your response to that? How do you deal with that? Well, I still treat them right. Mm. Still love them. You got to still love people. I don't care how. They, I don't care if they spit in your face, dude. <laughs> I can't. You got to still love them. Seriously, on the real yes. note, you still got to love them. And um, so you know, I love you, but I ain't gonna let you fool me. Mm. Come on, yeah. I know your games. <laughs> I know a witch when I see one. Woo. Come on now. I know a dog roof, roof, roof when I see one. And I know a cat meow and a cow moo. I know you when I see you. That's good, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that for real. Because they'll do it now. People, yeah. people are something else. People yeah, something. that's real. And like you said, like um, they'll talk about you. They'll talk bad about mm-hmm. you. They'll... um throw dirt on you they'll um when they don't understand something they'll criticize it uh-huh. and then as soon as it works like i always knew you could do it no you didn't no you didn't you never thought i could do it 
But now that I've done it and you think you can benefit from it, now you want to tell me you believed That's in it. me the whole time. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Moreno had the purpose on, I don't know if you heard it, but he said people. Yes. Deliver me from people. Yes. People are something. They are yes. the worst and the best of some of God's creation. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yes. What has been one of the toughest situations you've had with people? Mm. Smile in your face. That's Tabbers. Hey. I don't know if that's how the lyrics go, but it's somewhere like that. <laughs> yes. Bass Tabbers. Yeah. Bass Tabbers. Yes. Just be honest with me. Yeah. I can deal with a person, and this is the God of truth. A person that come and say, I don't rock with you. I don't like you. Like, I can deal with that because I know how to handle you. But when you smile in my face, I mean, you. Like, you got my back. You got me. And then when I find out, and knowing that it's true that you're talking about me, that's some painful stuff. Betrayal. That's the word I'm trying to use. Yeah. Yeah. How have you healed from that now? Growing and maturing in Christ. That's how I've grown. So I always use the scripture, and it's actually one of my favorite Bible time story. Jesus and Judas. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. He was betrayed. And one of my favorite scriptures is, arm yourself likewise so that Christ suffer. We're going to suffer on this Christian journey as well. But catch this. Even though Judas betrayed Jesus, but catch this what happened. Because Jesus allowed God to handle that, Judas ended up killing himself. Talk and a lot me. of times we try to do God's job. And we try to go back and fight people. Try to go back and, you know, um, get the last lick or whatever the case may be. A true story, and this is going to help somebody. i never forget. It was a lady. She blasted me on social media. During my period of blowing up on social media, right? This same lady that blasted me came to a concert that I had wrote a song for and that I had to leave. So catch this. I had to get out my feeling that moment, and I had to minister to this lady and other people that was there at that concert, the live recording or whatnot. But guess what? God allowed me to come on the top. You hear me? Yes, sir. He allowed me to come on the top. And now that same person that betrayed me, now they had to congratulate me. You hear what I'm telling you? So back to that story with Jesus and Judas. Judas ended up killing him on self because God allowed him to handle the battle. Guess what? And Jesus still went through now. Yeah. Because even though Judas betrayed him, he still had to go to the cross because Judas betrayed him. Yeah. But guess what? He went through it. And after they put him in the tomb, you know the story. Yes, sir. He got up again. Come on, man. And I come to tell somebody, because he got up, we can get up again, yeah. even through portrayal, yes, even sir. through being lied on, even through being talked about, even through being backstabbing. We have the same authority and the power to get up if we put it in God's hand and let God be God. Roger is the way you say it. At the end of the day, I would need to be comfortable with myself more. And because I felt like in order for me to be my true self or in order for me to have a big impact on the world, I would need to be with a group of people that I know when that's not the case. I was kind of scared at first because I felt like I was going to miss them. My parents have told me many times that I have gifts and I need to use it and like people wish they could do what I do and I was like "Mm, I don't want to do that. Since I was really young I really like to speak and make people feel better in life and it's just something I enjoy. Hi this is Nay and that was Nay's Place. If you want to catch more search Nay's Place on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and RXS Entertainment YouTube channel. The thing that I want to talk about with you now, thinking about everything that you've said so far, is like um, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Whether it be sexual orientation, whether it be career, whether it be whatever, it's like you can get into a place where I know with church people, they got this thing where they think they think they know you well enough mm. to judge your life. Mm-hmm. Have you dealt with that? Absolutely, absolutely. But I had to come to a conclusion, a conclusion that the matter is this, right? At the end of the day, when I die, I ain't got to answer the R-S-S. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I ain't got to ask the pastor Bernard, First Lady Sally. I got to answer the call. And as Christian and kingdom people, this is what I want us to do. It's our job to pray for people and let God do the judging. Yeah. And let God, because at the end of the day, right, we all, whether you're Christian or whatever, we say we have to stand before him. Yes. Not before you. And God has gave us an assignment, and our job is to pray for people. Yeah. Pray for your brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? So why do you think why do you think we are judgmental? Like from your experience in life, when people have judged you, what do you think made them do that? Because they ain't heal. Hurt people hurt people. The older I get, and I ain't even at 30 yet, I realize that hurt people hurt people. And most of the time with church people, we're not fully healed. We go through the emotions, the roller coaster. You ever see somebody that shout and fall out and do all that kind of stuff, but still leave church depressed? Mm. It's an emotion. Yeah. We deal with emotion. Not even as church people, but just people in general. In general. We deal with emotions, yes. emotion. But we have to um, just mature and actually get to the place where it's, you know, it's not an emotional thing, but it's like a, um, what I'm trying to say. Help me out, Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, <laughs> I sound like a preacher. <laughs> Somebody help me out, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I know, I know what you mean. It has to be more of a. Um, would it be? Would the word be practical? What would the word be? Because I know what you're saying. You know like, what I'm saying. Yes, because we can get in a place of emotion, mm -hmm. right? So let's break it down for the people. Mm -hmm. You you feel a way about your life. Mm -hmm. You feel a way about what's going on with your life. Mm -hmm. And you don't like it. Right. So instead of dealing with what you don't like, you try to bring somebody else down with you. There you go. Okay, I got to I gotta scandalize your name because I don't like my name. There you go. Come on. So something, I have to create a narrative where something is worse than me. Somebody is doing something worse than me. Therefore, I can feel better about myself because you're doing worse. I got to take you with me on the road. <laughs> That's that thing. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah, man. But we got to get healed from the emotional place. Yes. The emotional place. Yes. And, um, just build a relationship where you won't allow your trauma or hurt things to hurt you any longer. It first starts with you. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And when you hear from you... Guess what? It's easy to love other people. Yes. The way that God wants us to love. It's them. and it's hard, it's hard to love when you're hurting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like when you're in that place in your life where you don't have the strength to be real with yourself, mm -hmm. you can tear a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it it puts people in weird positions like especially when they really love you. Mm -hmm. Like you ever dealt with a person when you like I see you and I love you. And I really want to tell you the truth so that we can both grow. Mm -hmm. But you ain't trying to hear it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're doing all of this. Like you said, we working, we getting fired, we trying to do social media and we're doing all this and we're juggling all these things. And it's like to have the love of Christ is to grow together, mm -hmm. build together, hold each other accountable, have difficult conversations and pray for each other. Mm -hmm. Not judge because it's like, that's it. He who without sin cast the first stone. That's it. And ain't even so much of that. Just let God do. Stop doing God's job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stop doing job. I mean, job. <laughs> stop doing God's job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let God be God. Let God be God. That's it. Let That's God it. be God. That's it. And I think, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why we like to, like, in our own lives, we like to play God. In everybody else's lives, we like to play God. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe y'all can help us out. And knowing that he already knows. Yes. Jesus knows all about. Yes. Our struggles and troubles. Yes. He already knows. He already knows. And a lot of time on this journey, you know what we do? Yes, sir. We try to please people and not him. Yes, sir. That's the game. That's the game we playing <laughs> these days. Yeah. It's like, I need to make sure I get this type of feedback or I need to make sure this platform likes me or this person likes me. Did you go through that as you were growing? Yeah. yeah but I'm in the season now and I'm, I'm glad you asked, asked me that question. I'm in the season now. It ain't even about the fame anymore. It don't even matter. If God never blessed me with that 1.1 million followers, I'm really cool. I'm cool with it and I'm so serious because if I can just touch one person, you know what I'm saying? I know that my living is not in vain. Yes, sir. 
You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. And at the end of the day, I have come to a conclusion that this is ministry. Yes. People need me. They need the not not even so much me, but they need the God in me. Yes. You get what I'm saying? It's no longer about D Boy Twelve. It's no longer about Devontae Jones. It's about showing the love of God yeah. and allowing God to be glorified. And guess what? When I allow him to be glorified in due time, he will exalt me to that place. Yeah, I need to be. man. If it's his desire, if it's his desire for me to see Tyler Perry, he'll make it happen. If his is if it's his desire for me to be on BET. He'll make it happen. Yeah. He'll make it happen. And I'm telling you, and I'm going to be honest with you, very transparent. I ain't going to even count. At one point in my time, I did got to that mindset of, oh, it's about the fame, 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 fame. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. But guess what? A true story. BET, my video made it to I Love Us on BET. Okay. We was um, eating the fish Friday yeah. at Fish, and I was just shouting over fish. And on Country Wayne, and I forgot the other lady who hosted it. But they got a hold of the video, and they um, put it on BET, right? Now, at that time of my life, in a period, I'm always humble. But I had had, like, good relationship and standard with God. And that video went, like, to BET, you know, to a TV platform or whatever. Down through the years, because I was trying to please people, right? Yeah. Always, I'm still humble now. Yeah. But I'm trying to please people. Kind of got out of my relationship and covenant with God, you know, where I need to be at, whatever, right? Video still going viral, but I never hit a platform as such as BET. BET. You get what I'm saying? So I have come to a, con a conclusion in my life. It's out of my hand. Yeah. If I never get that house, never get that car, I just want to please God. So what happened after the BET thing? After the BET thing, um, video still doing what they're doing or whatever, you know, it just gave me the um more people knowing who I were. Yeah. You know, type thing. So, yeah. So when did you get to the place? And they paid me now. Let's go ahead and put it out there. They paid me. <laughs> I can't tell you how much, but they paid me. So when did you get to the point where you were like, okay, it's no longer about the fame? Was there a situation or an incident? That switched your mind back? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm in this mindset right now. Uh, what's today's day? October the 2nd, uh -huh. 2023. Uh -huh. Just like five weeks ago, right? I'm trying to do a big move. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into detail because you want to tell everybody, you know. I'm trying to do a big move, right? And I had to come back to inclusion. God got a way of getting your attention. Yes, sir. And getting you back to that place where you need to be. Yeah. Right? So um, I'm in this mindset now of like, yo, like, God, I need you. Ooh. Like, God, I got to have you. Like, yo, where you at? Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? And he remind me, I always been here. I never left. You left me because you was putting that TikTok before me. I can't get no help in here. You were putting them people before me. But I'm right here, Devontae. So then that's when he remind me that it's not even about the fame. Let me exalt you. Let me put you in that place that I need to put you in. If I did it before, if I gave you BET before, I'd do it again. But let me be the one. He said, let him be the one to do it. So, I'm in the season of my life. I really, I am really in the season of my life. And I'll tell you this, and I, I met a lot of content creators, and I love them so much. People that watch us, Y'all pray for your content creators, your favorite content creators, because we deal with things behind closed doors. It's real. Depression, sometimes low self-esteem. We go through it. We go through it. And um, I thank God, and I know it's God's grace that allow me to make people laugh, allow me to uplift people. Yeah. But behind closed doors, we go through things. Yeah, man. So, yeah, y'all keep us in prayer. I want to go to this... Um the hosting that you've been doing. Because mm -hmm. I did see a couple of flyers where, like, you did a play, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've been hosting, like... Shout out to the Marcus Hattie. Yeah. So <laughs> where did this, um, where did the hosting thing come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I love to talk. I never knew I really had hosting in me. And I don't know who was the first person that gave me my first hosting event. But whoever you are, thank you. <laughs> but, um, 
as I began to say earlier, God began to expand my territory with the Debo 12 production. Yes, sir. And um, people were put out to me. I had stepped out on faith. I made a flyer. I said, hey, if you want to book Debo 12 for hosting, I think I put MC and singing on uh, food credit, reach out to me. And an individual reached out to me to host the event. And um, it's about being a people person. And I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. Ever since. Yeah. Ever since, yeah. So, And I put on my first comedy show in 2023 and I didn't think people were gonna come out to support me and um they came out in big numbers y'all and catch this I didn't only cater to the church people but I catered to the world as well yeah. and even there people was like yo I needed that it. Yeah. it blessed me so I had put on five major comedy shows um in eastern North Carolina in 2023 and now we're working on Christmas Parade giving back to the community let's go on this deep boy production I love giving back so let's talk about the comedy shows. Mm -hmm. So were you on the show as a comedian or you just hosted it? Hosted. Oh. Hosted. And catch this. This was giving other people opportunity to use their gift. It's all meant. It's all ministry. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. And it's like creating opportunities for other people yeah. is more fulfilling than mm -hmm. like any other thing in the world. Like mm -hmm. creating a platform that gives a voice to other people. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at, man. It is, it is. Shout out to my TikTok friends who I love so much. Um, yeah. Um, we got this thing, like, it's just us four and we yeah. together. I don't know if you watched them, but shout out to Nas from the Gram, yeah. Hollywood Jen, yeah. and the AD Hunts. Um, Let's go. I appreciate them so much. They came out here and did a comedy show for me, mm -hmm. um, and it turned out in big numbers. It was their first time ever doing, not Jen the first time, but Nas and AD, first time ever hosting or doing like a comedy set wow. in front of live audience. And now these are big time content creators, right? And you would think that they done did stand up, they done did it. But I was able to, God has able me and blessed my platform to get them the first time to do stand up. Go! And I love them so much. Um, Crying so bad, shout out to him as well. Other people. Yeah. So yeah. So this has been an amazing interesting ride for you man. yeah and you know what that's amazing about it people have came to the show from alabama shout out to my moderators kiss my curls dd all of them from alabama south carolina georgia in the building just to come celebrate and turn up with little d boy 12 from bethel from bethel yo that's crazy <laughs> Ain't that crazy it is yeah it is. man and it, it's it's more crazy because like um it's a it's a lot of things i want to talk about talking to you because it's like it reminds me of me, and I'll explain. Like, you grew up singing, right? Mm -hmm. And then you did the Wendy's video, mm -hmm. became a food critic. Then you hosted these events. You become a host. You do the comedy shows and all the other stuff that you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. My point is, it's like, oftentimes, I know for me, I used to think that what I was called to do and the people that I was called to reach was only in one lane. So, like, I produce music, right? Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I used to think, yo, that's going to be the way mm -hmm. that destiny is fulfilled. And it's like, no, it ain't. Like, you were singing in church. You could have you could have said to yourself, I'm going to become the next Marvin Sapp. Mm -hmm. But then a video blows up and you're like, well, I'm finna roll with this. Uh -huh. And like for a lot of people, those things fall in their lap. But if their ego uh, is attached to what they've always been popular doing, they won't trust the next thing. Come on now. Now I needed that for myself. That was good. It's real life because I did it. So then I started this podcast and I'm like, well, maybe it ain't the music. And it's like, to hear myself say that, when all I've done since I was 12 years old is music, and it's like, well, maybe that ain't the, maybe that ain't the way. Maybe that's a part of it, mm. but that's not the way. And then I look at you, and I'm like, he could have easily just been somebody praising worship leader, been yeah. on salary, and worked at a bank or something. Instead, the video go viral, and he tried. And you had never done it before? Never. It was just a random, a random your per, your, and that's the thing. So I'm sure your personality has always been this way. Oh, yeah. The comedian always has always been. But it's like to to use a different part of you right. to reach a bigger audience right. is what I'm getting at. Because yes, a lot of people feel stagnant mm -hmm. 
because they have multiple gifts, but they're stuck in the one that they've always been popular in. Mm. So just because for the last 20 years, that's what people known you as. Like, if it ain't moving the needle, like, try something else. Try it. You good at other stuff? Try it. That's it. That's it. Um, another scripture in the Bible. For I know the plans. I know the plans. I know the plans. We and I'm not know. talking about me. We don't but know. But he knows. Yes. He knows. So, um, as I said, it's all in God's hands and all yes. in God's time. It and is. it is so. It is so. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, let's, oh my God, like I could go. The it, like in that scripture, and it is so. Whatever God said will be, will be. That's it. And here's the thing. Like, it's beyond what you can comprehend. Mm -hmm. Like, God knows more about you than you know about yourself. So you're limiting yourself by trying to do it with what you know. You don't know. Catch this in that same guy you're talking about. He said, I do exceeding. Yes. Abundantly. Abundantly above all you could ask or think. Shout out to the um, Pastor Latoya. Um, Brewington, yeah. Um, Exceedingly. <laughs> yeah. Abundant. Like, literally, yes. he would do that. He would blow your mind. Yes. Like, yeah. Absolutely. And I'm you know what I'm so excited about? What's that? This is just the beginning of my story. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I can't think the way he thinks. Yeah, man. I don't know what he got playing. Yeah. I'm just riding the wave. Yeah, man. Each day just saying, Lord, do what you do. Let's go. We out. We out. That's it. Hey y'all. We love y'all. This has been another episode of the RXS podcast with Devontae Jones, aka D Boy 12. We out. Yeah. Peace. Yeah.